Hey there, tech fans. Rick here again with a quick review of the Femi X8 SE V2 drone. This is one of the very latest products from Femi that includes a tremendous amount of advanced features and functions that make it the perfect choice for new flyers looking to join the hobby because it's incredibly easy to fly, as well as experienced flyers that may be looking to upgrade to a little better platform. Now, I've been flying this drone for well over a year, and I absolutely love it. And in this video, I'm going to give you five good reasons why I think you're going to fall in love with it as well. Now, let's start with the flight characteristics, because anytime you're considering a drone, there are a few things you're probably curious about. How far does it fly? How long does it fly? What kind of imaging package is included? Does it have any kind of automated features and safety features built in? Well, the answer to all those questions is, yes, it does, and then some. So, I'll start off with the flight time. This product on a fully charged battery can stay in the air for up to 35 minutes. Now, that's almost unheard of for a drone this size that's a mid-sized drone. So 35 minutes of flight time means that you can get up in the air, you can get out on target, and you've got plenty of time to focus in on whatever it is you're trying to film or take pictures of, and maybe even take a little extra footage and a couple extra pictures to make sure you have the shots you need and still have plenty of battery left to get back home and land. So 35 minutes of flight time on a fully charged battery. Now, of course, it's going to vary based on how fast you're flying, how strong the wind is, and a couple other factors, but that's a really long time to have a drone up in the air. As far as flight distance goes, there's a new technology that Femi's developed that connects the drone to the controller called Rocklink, and that's a very sophisticated connection topology between the two, and that provides a flight distance of up to 10 kilometers away. Now, of course, in the United States, we have a visual line of sight requirement where you can't fly it further than you can see it, but knowing I've got a rock-solid connection between the drone and the controller for 10 kilometers means that I can fly it in close, and if I have a lot of interference or I've got buildings and trees and other things that are going to sort of get in the way of that transmission, it's going to still stay rock solid because I've got that long distance transmission technology. So you're not going to have any problems with the drone braking connection and going off heading towards the horizon. All right, so as far as the imaging package goes, they've upgraded the sensor on this product. It's now a half inch sensor, which is a giant sensor for a mid-sized drone, and that can produce 48 megapixel pictures and up to 4K footage from that camera on the front. They've also upgraded the imaging package in the back end, the processing package. So getting that information from the sensor back to the processor is high speed, 100 megabits a second. And then that processor can really move that technology through the actual processing step to give you phenomenal footage and really, really nice pictures. It's also got HDR technology built in, which enhances the image as well. And HDR technology is important because when you're flying your drone, you're going to go from very light environments to very dark environments, and the HDR can kick in and actually soften that bright scene. It can burn Bring up the brightness in that darker scene, so you're going to get some phenomenal footage out of this unit. Another big difference between this and a lot of other drones is the fact that they've got a beautiful controller. A lot of the drones out there have a controller that look like this, but they can only handle a phone. With this one, watch this. Look how far that expands. You could easily put a small tablet in there and have no problems whatsoever. So I use this a lot with my iPad mini, the iPad mini 5. I slide it in there, I close it up, I make the connection to the controller, and I have a big screen. A lot of other drones on the market use a really, really small controller. And the problem is you've got to get some kind of big bracket to hang a tablet off the back of it. And you've got this Rube Goldberg set up. What Femi's done here is thought about, gee, you know, Rick's going to probably want to use a bigger screen. Why don't we give him a controller that expands that he can put his tablet right in it. So I love that feature as well. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the automation because drones have gotten a lot smarter in recent years and there's a lot of artificial intelligence built in. Things like, um, you know, automated flight patterns, for example. So when you put the drone up, there are multiple automated flight patterns built in in the software that you can immediately activate the first time you put the drone up because it's going to take you a while to get good with the joysticks to fly the drone around an area and capture the footage you need or trying to circle you if you're in the middle of the frame. There are automated flight patterns built into the drone where at the push of a button, I can have the drone keep me in the center of the frame and fly around me. I can have it chase me through the woods. I can have it fly away from me and reveal the area behind me. So what I'm trying to get at there is that you don't need to be an expert flyer immediately to get some incredible footage. You can use those automated flight uh, patterns to do that for you. It also has follow me mode. So it can actually chase you on your bike. It can chase you on your skateboard. If you're in a boat, it'll follow you in a boat. So the drone has got a lot of automated features built in. They're based on artificial intelligence that makes it really a co-pilot when you're up there in the air. And that's why I said it's perfect for new flyers because when you put the drone up, if you take your thumbs off the joystick, it's gonna stay exactly where you left it in 3D space. 
until you move the joysticks again. So you can manually fly it until you get good, but you can always use the automated flying patterns as well, which turns you into a phenomenal cinematographer really the first day you've got the drone up in the sky. Another key difference between this and a lot of the other drones is that it's completely remote ID compliant right now. A lot of the drones need modifications, they need firmware updates, they may never become remote ID compatible. This one's ready to rock and roll the minute you power it up, so you won't have to worry about the new laws that are coming into play in September. It'll automatically broadcast the beacon and you're good to fly. Then the last thing I want to mention are the safety features built into the drone because it's smart enough to do crash avoidance. So if you're flying in an area and you forget, you know, you're not looking over here and you're flying this direction and there's a tree approaching, the drone will pull back. It's not going to run into that tree. It also has intelligence built in with dual IMUs, which is actually the, the navigation technology inside the unit. And there are two of them in there. So if one of them fails or one of them's getting a little bit flaky, the other one will take over. So you're not going to have any issues with the drone heading for the horizon on its own. One other feature that's built in is battery protection. So if the drone senses that the batteries are getting low, or if there's any problems with the batteries, because that's a single point of failure, the drone will immediately take control, it'll elevate to a height you have set in the application, spin to face the home point, fly back to where it took off, and land within inches of its takeoff point. So it's incredibly sophisticated, and it's got a camera on the bottom that'll give it precision landing when it's coming down. And then the very last thing I want to mention is that Femi was smart enough to build an accessory port in right there on the bottom, which means you can expand the use case for the drone. So for example, they have a module available right here that's a megaphone that I can actually talk from my phone through that. So if I'm doing search and rescue, I can say, hey, there's a drone overhead. You know, wave your hand so I can see you. It also has a little drop mechanism on it. So I can hang something on here, fly the drone. If I'm at a search and rescue, maybe I got a bottle of water hanging on the bottom. I can fly out and drop that bottle of water just by tapping a button on the controller. So they've really thought about not just the drone, but the ecosystem around the drone with the software, safety features, the improvements in the camera, the flight time extension, the distance extension. And what you're getting here is a package that really gives you everything you'd want in a mid-sized drone, um, you know, in, in a budget-friendly way that really has features that you can use today and even features you can expand later on. So I like it an awful lot. I think it's a really, really excellent drone, again, for new flyers and even flyers looking to upgrade. And again, I've been flying for well over a year and it's my go-to drone most afternoon. So I hope you found this review helpful. I think it's a great product and I think you're going to like it a lot as well. So thanks a lot for watching and until next time, as always, stay nerdy.